Be inspired. Sean was diagnosed with autism at 18 months. When it was discovered that he was also gluten and casein intolerant, he was placed on a biomedical diet. After trying a number of the mixes available, Grandma Debbie and her sister Kathy knew they could do better. Something just as healthy, but with improved taste and texture. Inspiration mixes are exactly that. And we'd like to share our delicious creations with you. We're sure you'll love them just as much as Sean does. Bon appetit. Welcome to Inspiration Mixes Gluten-Free Baking Mix Company. Today we're going to show you how to make a gluten-free pie crust, one that you can actually roll out, a two-crust apple pie. So to get started, we're going to take our baking mix pouch. This mix makes two nine-inch crusts. So the first one we'll make is going to be the apple for the apple pie. You take two thirds of shortening. I like to use a organic shortening, and I also like to use a dough cutter, dough cutter or pastry cutter. You can use a fork if you like, but this gives it that pea size that you always want when you're making a pie crust. So now we're going to add our liquid. We have one egg. A half a teaspoon of vanilla. We also have a recipe for chicken pot pie. If you make it, I recommend you cut the vanilla down a little bit, make it more of a savory flavor. We have a half a cup of cold water. This is important because again, when you combine the water and it's cold with the um, shortening or butter or the cream cheese, you don't want it to melt. Then we have apple cider vinegar. We're going to use a half a tablespoon or one and a half teaspoons. You have three teaspoons to a tablespoon. And we're going to mix that in here. I take this a little whisk and I whisk it, to it together because you want to make sure that it's all mixed together so all the flavors are incorporated. The egg doesn't get kind of slimy in there. So you have it like that, almost, almost milky texture. Now the next thing we're going to do, we just simply pour this in and stir it. Now you see that we're just going to moisten it. It seems a little liquidy and it will. Okay, now we have our pie crust ready to go. We're going to take out some plastic wrap because the magic in rolling out any kind of pie crust nicely is it has to be refrigerated for an hour. Even wheat crust you have to do that with. So we're going to simply put it in here, roll it up, take it, kind of flatten it out just a little bit, and it looks like that. And we're going to refrigerate it in an hour, and then I'll show you how to roll out a gluten-free pie crust. Okay, now our, we've refrigerated our pie dough for an hour, and now I'm going to show you how to roll it out and simply place it into the pie tin. So we're going to be making an apple pie. The recipe for the ingredients for the apple pie, and I'll go over that just real quickly with you too, is on our website www.inspirationmixes.com So basically what you do, you want to put enough tapioca flour and if you don't have tapioca flour handy you can use cornstarch and you can use rice flour but I will warn you, rice flour is a little bit gritty so the tapioca flour bakes nicely into the pie crust and you don't see all this nice white stuff right here. So you simply go out. I have a nine inch pie pan here. So I have a nine inch glass pie pan. And you want to roll it out 
I try to make it in a circle because you want to make it about an inch wider than the actual pie plate. So what I do is I take it and kind of measure it. That one's a little bit short, so let's do that just a little bit more. Okay, so I have my pie plate. I place it over the top and I can see that it's one inch, so that's perfect. Some people use parchment paper to roll this out on, which is fine. You'll still need to use the tapioca flour. However, I like to do it with this knife. This is a pastry knife. It's a large pastry knife. And I just simply go underneath it, making sure it does not stick. I get my pie plate close. I pick up this end with my hand and lift it into the pie plate. So now you can see it's in there and don't worry if it doesn't quite come over the top because we're going to put our apple pie filling in it and you're going to have another layer come over the top. Wasn't that nice? And it was really easy. I use instant tapioca pudding in order to use as a thickener. Some people have used cornstarch in the past and if that's something you've done, I would go ahead and do that. I like the tapioca. The other thing I do is I cut my apples a little bit small because we like to have the apples so they're completely done. And sometimes if you do them too big, it, it makes them a little crunchier. But if you like the crunchy, then do it however is comfortable for you. I also prepare this the night before I use sugar and nutmeg and cinnamon. And when you make it the night before and you kind of stir it up, it gives the apple an opportunity to have that, uh, those spices just kind of become part of the apple itself. Otherwise, if you do it fast, it still tastes good, but it doesn't incorporate it quite as nice. So now I'm gonna scoop this in here. By doing it um, the night before, even a couple hours before, you can see all these nice juices that are created. And you want to be careful not to fill the crust too full because as the pie bakes, it's going to boil. And when it boils, if you have too much filling, it'll boil over and it'll separate your top crust. So now you can see we've made it. I've got approximately five cups in here. And there we go. Now we're gonna put the lid on. Okay, so now we're gonna roll out our second pie crust for the top. And of course, we use that tapioca flour. Just take it, we'll do exactly the same thing that we did before. Just making sure this is covered very well with the tapioca flour and then we're going to roll it out. As you can see this rolls out so nice you don't have any splits in it. If you refrigerate your dough overnight be sure to let it sit for an hour or so because you don't want it hard because it will split when you try to pick it up or even when you roll it out. And don't be afraid I use lots of tapioca flour And there we go. Now I'm gonna take this and bring it over. I'm gonna do exactly what I did before. And again, if you feel comfortable using parchment paper, you can use the parchment paper and just flip it on over. We're gonna take it and we're just gonna plop it on. And there we go. Isn't that beautiful? A gluten-free two-layer apple pie. So now what we're gonna do is do what my grandma showed me how to do and that is to crimp the edges. Now, I could never do it the way my grandmother did it, so I'm gonna show you an easy way that I figured out and it still looks as beautiful as she did. You simply take your thumb and you just go all the way around the pie crust, making an indent so it looks like you have that crimping. And once we get to the end, then I'm going to show you another trick that just cleans it all up. You just take it in and you pat it towards the center 
and it bakes absolutely beautifully. Look at that. And I didn't have to do that stuff that I can't do. The last step is we need to take a knife and we need to give it some air vents. Pie, especially apple or berry pie, is going to boil. So the steam, you have to let it out. Otherwise, it will lift the top of your crust. So you just simply do that. And it's also another way as it's baking, you can see it bubbling up out over that. And you can simply see that it's done. I baked the apple pie for 45 minutes at 425. About five minutes before, I took and made a little egg wash, if you can tolerate the egg, and I sprinkled it with cinnamon and sugar. So now let's try a piece of our gluten-free apple pie. Didn't that turn out nice? And the tapioca in there just made it perfect. From our home to your kitchen, bon appetit.